Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Copilot Learning Hub Live. All right, so we're continuing our Copilot with data, in data, whatever you want to call it, series. We've got with us Josh joining us all the way from Kenya to share with us something really, really important that many of you care deeply about, which is Copilot in, here we go, if we can say it right, Copilot in data science and in data engineering in Fabric. Did I say it right? That's right. Donna. Oh my gosh, look yes. at me. <laughs> 10 points for saying the co-pilot name correctly. <laughs> this episode's going to be great. OK, Josh, please tell everyone who you are, what you do, and what you're here to share with us. All right. Uh, so my name is Josh Demenge. I'm a cloud developer advocate for the data advocacy team, um, talking a lot about Microsoft Fabric. And in today's episode, I'll be continuing from where my colleague Sombeleza left off uh, with Data Factory. And I'll be talking about data engineering and data science in Microsoft Fabric and how you can be able to leverage co-pilot powered capabilities. OK, that is awesome. Um, we've learned from Sombeleza's episode that Fabric is one of the most powerful tools on the planet. And we, I don't think most people even understand the first layer of all of the things that Fabric can do for you. So can you give everyone a little overview on what is Fabric anyway? Just a little refresher, because I think people think, oh, it's like a OneDrive for data. But it's not. There's so much more to it. Yeah. So when you think about Microsoft Fabric, it's not several products. It's just one unified software as a service product that combines all the different um, tools and services that we are aware of, like we know of Power BI, um, Azure Synapse Analytics, uh, Azure Data Factory. So all of these uh, services are combined together into one single um, unified uh, SaaS platform that allows you to perform data analytics at scale. And now we have all these different workloads. As you can see on my screen, we have the Data Factory all the way to the Power BI uh, workloads. And these different workloads, they are built for for specific personas, data engineers, data scientists, data analytics, and also for specific tasks, right? And so in the previous episode, Someleze covered Data Factory and what you're able to do with Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric and also showed you the copilot powered capabilities. Now for today, we're only focusing on these two particular workloads, data engineering and data science. So when you think about data engineering, this workload uh, is powered by um, Spark and it allows you to perform data transformations at scale. And then the data science workload uh, provides an end-to-end -end workload for data scientists to build AI models, collaborate on notebooks, and also train, deploy, and even manage machine learning models. Okay, what I like about this co-pilot story right here is it's there to help a beginner like me vaguely understand how to do this, but there to help a specialist like you do their job way faster. So this is one exactly. of those, those kinds of co-pilots where it's ideally set up for the expert, but the beginner, it's a great learning tool to get you boosted right into, oh, this is what all these random words mean. This is what all these visualizations mean really quickly. So I'm very excited to learn about this because you and I are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. I am very much fabric novice. You are very much fabric expert. All right, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, this is the only slides I have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump into Microsoft Fabric and then we can get started, right? Let's do it. So I'm going, I'm going to switch to this particular workspace. And from the previous episode, uh, Someleza was able to load data from a bunch of CSV files, uh, perform some transformations, and load that data into the lake house. Now, we can be able to see the various tables that um, Someleza uh, loaded into the lake house. And for this particular episode, we'll be focused on three particular tables. We have the persons table, um, the products table, and the customer table, right? And the end goal for this episode is to see, can we be able to help uh, the marketing team leveraging this data set to build an analytical model that can be able to predict the likelihood of a customer mm -hmm. purchasing a bike or not, right? Okay, yep. But if you see, I have a column called demographics. In this person table, I have a column called demographics. And from the look of things, it has XML data, right? It's not text data like, uh, numerical data like the other columns, it's it's text data in, in the form of XML. And so what this contains, it contains XML data with various properties about the demographics of a, of a customer. So things like the date of birth, where they live, the, the number of kids they have, and, and stuff like that, all right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to try and extract data from this particular column 
and combine it with data from the products table and the customer table, and then try to build a, an analytics model that can be able to predict the likelihood of a customer buying a bike, mm-hmm. all right? Okay. But we'll try using Copilot along the way, but we can try and do this within the short period that this episode has. Okay. All so right. I want to see if Copilot can tell us if this person is going to buy a bike or not. That is what we're trying to figure exactly. out. That, okay. All right. That's kind of the. Okay. That's kind is... of the. It's kind of building that model that okay. can be able to do that. That's okay. the end goal. This is a fun party trick. I like this. This is amazing for retailers. But okay, okay. I want to see. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is you can directly open a notebook, click on open notebook and create a new notebook or select an existing notebook. Mm-hmm. But I had help from some Eliza. He had kind of gotten started on this task and he had created a notebook and sent it to me for me to complete the task with. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of just going to load the notebook that he sent to me and we're going to get started from there. Right. All right. So I'm going to switch here and select the data engineering workload. And once I select the data engineering workload, I'm going to import a notebook. All right, so I'll be uploading a notebook and I'm going to select this particular notebook that um, Sonal has shared. So this is going to import the notebook into the workspace. And this is ideally even in a real world scenario, you might be working with code that you're not the one who actually authored, right? You, mm-hmm. You're collaborating, you might be working with code that someone else has authored. Yeah. So in this case, um, I'll switch to our um, to our Leca, I mean, to our workspace and here's the notebook that we imported. And we're just going to open the notebook. So I like that analogy where as coders, we often work on someone else wrote these functions or someone wrote this library and we're using it to actually go and build something. So this is something very similar where some Elise built this notebook for you and now you're going to use it to do this analysis and answer a business question. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the first thing I'm going to do, yeah, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect this notebook to our Lake House. So I'm just going to kind of select and tell it, okay, my data, the data that I'm going to be working with is seated in this particular place, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to add a Lake House and select the Lake House that we already have. So we have this Learning Hub Lake House, and I'm just mm-hmm. going to add that, right? Okay. So once we connect that, we can be able to see all the different data that we have. All right. So it's going to take just a few minutes and we can be able to see all the tables Again, that some LS are loaded uh, using the data factory. We now have them here, right? Perfect. Now, the next thing, if you check on our menu bar, and if you remember from the data factory episode, we had a copilot button on the on the menu ribbon, right? Mm-hmm. I do have that copilot button. So I'm just going to click on the copilot button mm-hmm. and so that I can add copilot capabilities inside this notebook so that I can have copilot assisting me along the way. Perfect. So you've summoned a copilot. So I'm just going to, okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to click get started. Mm-hmm. And what that does, it adds this new cell on top of the notebook. You saw that? Adds this new cell here. And then this cell is going to add all the required packages for you to use copilot inside this notebook. Perfect. So I'm going to execute this. And as that is running, I'm going to use that time to tell you what can we do with copilot in notebooks. Mm-hmm. So the first thing, uh, the, the first thing that Copilot inside notebooks, and this is the experience for data factory and data engineering. The first thing that it's going to do, it's going to enable you, or it's going to help you understand how best can I analyze my data. Yes. Right. So I have this data that I have loaded in my notebook, or even the data that I have in my lake house. How best can I analyze my data? So Copilot can help you with that. And even if you check the the pane on the right here, you can be able to see some of the some of the prompts that Copilot suggest include like suggest data visualizations, mm-hmm. generate insights from my data, right? So that's one of the things that Copilot can help you do. It can help you figure out how, how best to analyze your data, right? Okay. I love that. I like those prompts, by the way, those starter prompts, even though you do have to be kind of knowledgeable to go and set up the notebook exactly where you're supposed to, you can actually get started by getting some insights like help me you know, bring my lake house into this thing, generate insights about this report. Those are good prompts. Those are good starter prompts. Exactly. All right. This is a lot of information, and all of you are like, oh, this is very complicated. It is complicated, but it's important. So we're going to take a pause, and when we come back, we're going to have Josh show us how Copilot can help you understand your code, but also help you analyze the results to figure out what in the heck they're saying. Stay tuned. <laughs> 